to 30 Second Chances, where we ask deep, contemplative questions and provide far too little time to formulate thoughtful, reflective answers. My guest today is award-winning sound effects and sound designer, Rick Veers. Rick is the author of the Sound Effects Bible and the Location Sound Bible and Make Some Noise. He is the founder of Blast Wave FX and he is the host of Detroit Shop the Detroit Chop Shop Video Diaries. Wow, I said that just like Siri almost. Hmm. <laughs> Rick, how you it doing? Took, man? It only took you three tries, but yeah, um, I am doing very well. <laughs> you know, I think we're up to about episode ninety here, so you know, one of these days I'll get this right. You know, I think you're doing great. It's all good. Okay, you know the drill: thirty seconds on the clock, and then on to the next question. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Wait, do I, hold on. Do I win anything though? Real quick, I, we didn't clarify that. You, you know, win am I winning my anything? Or? Undying gratitude. Um, Good enough. And, and as much snark as we can cram into this sucker. All right. I'm in it for the snark. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Question number one. Describe your job to a five-year-old. Uh, uh, I am a creator that shares the creation process with others so they can create for themselves. That sounds very creative. I did rehearse it, though, in my defense. <laughs> that was the only question. I'm like, he's going to ask me what I do. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Here's the, short, the short answer is, is I do anything I want. True, true, true story. I create whatever I want to do, man. I've done it. I've been a licensed pyrotechnician. I've been a movie producer. I've written scripts. I've written books. I've, I've produced. I've taught. I've done sound effects. I do sound design, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Next question. What's the strangest thing you believed as a small child? The strangest thing I believed? Um... Oh, wow. I believe, you know what? Honestly, I believe that Gene Simmons was going to eat me in my sleep. That's the truth. <laughs> right about the time that Darth Vader or... came out, all of a sudden I'm like, great, now the rock stars are trying to eat me. Well, you know, as a four or five year old, when you see Gene Simmons spitting blood, and he's got that makeup and all that stuff, that, that can be a little traumatizing uh, for I'm a child. So, true I'm story. I was, <laughs> as a kid, I was totally freaked out. I thought Kiss was going to eat me. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> What's the one thing you wish someone had told you before you started your career? Um, nobody ever does it right. Because the whole time I, I was like, man, I got to be doing it wrong. And then every time I would meet somebody that was doing something moderately successful, they're like, I have no idea. I'm making it up as I go along, too. So um, there's no right way to do it. Just do what feels good and just don't stop. That's that's what I wish somebody would have told me because the whole time I was doing my career, I'm like, am I doing this right? It seems like there should be a better way. And then you discover <laughs> you just, we're you just all faking it. it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, we are. Every single one of us. Okay, next question. You've just run off and joined the circus. What's your act? Whew. Oh, I'm going to be a clown. There's no – I don't even need the – I don't even need the nose. I'll entertain all the kids, yes. With the big shoes yep. and shit? Uh, probably they would probably be some kind of version of Converse, you know, the All Stars. But yeah, probably. Yep. Yeah, but but like size forty six Converse or something, right? It would. Yes, they would be huge. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many of us we could get in the small car if we all had the same size shoes. I so. was kind of wondering about that. What kind of car you would be driving? You know, I'm... it would be something really small that I could try to fit all of my friends in, so that we could go to the drive through <laughs> theater and not have to pay for everything. Next question. If you had to use one bit of outmoded technology rather than its modern day counterpart, what would it be? Now, is this for audio engineering or anything? I don't care what it is. I got to go with audio engineering because the first thing that popped in my head, I've never had a chance to play with one of these and I always wanted to, but a Synclavier. I'm pretty sure I could run circles around it with the software that I used even from, you know, decades ago, but uh, I always wanted to play with the Synclavier and I never got a chance to. I can imagine that. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like now you can probably do all that stuff with your phone, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But still the play sounds and, you know. That'd be fun. Next question. What is the weirdest or most embarrassing thing you've ever done on autopilot? Oh. <laughs> all, right, all right, really quick story. So I was in high school. I had a dream that I was late for school, and then I woke up to my alarm clock. And real, or I, I dreamed I was in the shower, and my alarm clock went off. So as soon as the alarm clock went off, I ran out of the shower, ran into my room to turn it off. The only problem is I wasn't in my shower. I was in my bed the whole time. So when I ran out of the room and turned to go to my bedroom, I ran right into a wall. <laughs> 
true story. The next week, I drove myself to school at three thirty in the morning because I didn't realize what time it was. So, mm. and believe it or not, I never did drugs. That is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. If you could have one pointless or semi-useless superpower, what would it be? Uh, you, so, I, so this is a semi-useless Right. I don't want to hear you want to fly or something like that or x-ray vision. Well, if it's going to be you know, semi-useless, I want to be able to fly but only this high. That way I could just kind of elevate and then people would just push me and I would just float around the room. I don't know. I'm not sure what kind of superpower I would need. Well, well superpower, that's sort of interesting. That is, that's not really flying. That's like hovering. I'm super evasive because I can get myself out of problems pretty easy. <laughs> Excuse, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Yep. I love it. Okay, that concludes our regularly scheduled questions. I'm now going to put 30 seconds on the clock and allow you to either answer for me a question you wish I had asked you, pontificate on something, shamelessly plug something, ask me a question, whatever you want. It's 30 seconds. Go. Oh, wow. Um, she whiz. Uh, do you have any other questions for me or do you have any follow-up questions for what I asked? Is that a question? I think so. You said I could ask anything. That's my question. <laughs> what would you do if I gave you 30 seconds and had nothing to do with them? Um, uh, <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Probably hum, uh, hum the theme song to Jeopardy, but then I think we would get into licensing issues. Uh, you know what? I liked my answers and I'm sticking to them. <laughs> That Excellent. wasn't that bad. That wasn't that didn't hurt at all. That was actually very well done. I like the way you punted on that last one. That's kind of cool. It was very meta, yep. you know. Um, it was judo. I was just getting out of the way and giving it back to you. I love it. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I don't want this. Give it. Yeah. I mean, you can have the question. <laughs> Rick Veers, thank you for being our guest. My pleasure. Welcome to Thirty Second Chances. Where <laughs> 